to Navigating Academia Family. My name is Dr. Jay Phoenix Singh. It's a pleasure to have you here with me today so that I can answer a valued viewer's question. Now, as always, I appreciate the love. Please do take a second to like this video. That's just hitting the nice old thumbs up button down below me on the screen. Helps me out a lot, especially helps me be able to spread the word about the channel, get more subscribers, and at the end of the day, fulfill my mission, which is to be able to help as many people as possible. So do me a favor, hit that. Really appreciate it. Today's question comes from Flawlessly. So thank you so much for uh, for your question. Really appreciate it. Uh, guys, do please, you know, when you have a question, especially if it's a high sensitivity question, which is what I want to encourage you to ask in other words a question that you think would be of interest to the entire navigating academia community please do me a big favor and just put your name in there or even like a fake first name or something like this and this way i'm not calling people by handles i can call you by your name okay so here's the question from flawlessly so flawlessly says i'm an undergraduate at the university of ottawa in ontario i'm studying psychology but i have no clue what i want to specialize in at the moment that's okay still debating between clinical neuropsych and industrial psych and guys, always remember that it doesn't matter kind of the specific subfield that you're in. You can get into all sorts of different types of research in these things. Keep in mind that of those three, clinical is always the most flexible, but it's also the most difficult to get into because of that. So, Flawlessly says that she came across our channel by searching for the difference between PhD and PsyD programs. There's so much info out there, right? Okay. My question for you today is, what do you think is more relevant or important when we talk about IO psych programs and internship in a company, for example, working with human resources or research in the field we're interested in? Okay, so this is basically two sides of the same coin. Uh, when you're applying to be able to get into a program, you always want to have whatever the equivalent of practical experience is. It could be clinical experience, like working in a school if you want to work with, uh, with kiddos, or it could be something like... Uh, working in so like what I did for instance so my clinical experience uh, was working in a prison in Connecticut and then also working at an obsessive compulsive disorder institute uh, for severe and refractory OCD clients up in the Boston area and for me I was trying to decide whether I wanted to work with kids or whether I wanted to work with adults uh, and I ended up wanting to work with kiddos and so because of that that became kind of more relevant but those were kind of my clinical experiences that the equivalent for you in terms of a practical experience would be working let's say in an HR setting, right? Uh, or research in the field you're interested in. That's another piece. That's like a totally separate piece. So it's independent, right? At the same time, both are arguably equally as important, especially if you're applying for any kind of a program that provides some kind of clinical licensure, but also has a research component to it. You can maximize the likelihood of getting into those programs by kind of focusing on both of those simultaneously, right? Keep in mind, though, that when you say here working with human resources, that's not going to do you any favors when it comes to something like neuropsych. But of course, there are IO programs that have neuropsych elements to them, even though it's obviously much more rare than, you know, different, let's say, more kind of social psych related elements uh, or social psych related labs within industrial organizational programs. But do some exploring, right? The good news is, is that if you're interested in uh, neuropsych and at the same time, you're also interested in IO. And if you don't know IO, it's industrial organizational. It's like working with businesses and all. OK, usually in some sort of consultation capacity. What happens in that case, right, is that you're going to be in such a niche that there's going to be a very small number of individuals who are thought leaders. And that's great because especially for doctoral programs, you want to narrow your field as much as you can. And remember, my guidance always to you always is you start with the doctoral supervisor and you work it backwards uh, especially if it's a non-clinical uh, when i say non-clinical program if it's a clinical program that is a research element like clinical psychology phd programs relative to PsyD programs some PsyD programs have a research component but it's not the emphasis the emphasis is definitely there in the phd programs for those programs you lead with the supervisor i'm telling you right now okay uh, so in that case, right, it'll narrow it down for you so that you'll probably know the people who are big names in your field, i.e., uh, you know, industrial organizational, the neuropsych elements to it, which is great. Okay. Um, so those two different things, it's not either or you should do both, right? And just find a way to be able to get that done. I, I know that it takes a lot of time. Please understand that I know. Finally, also, is there really a difference between HR and IO psychology? I have never freaking heard of HR psychology in my life. I don't know if that's what you meant. I mean, human resources and IO psychology, yeah, there's definitely a difference, right? You know, let's put it this way. When it comes to HR, so like I've hired, I've had an HR department for one of my companies, right? So it's like I'm very familiar, right? Uh, there's overlap for certain, right? The theoretical orientations usually that are followed, the rigor of the... Uh, 
of the research um, in, in those two different fields are different. Like I said, they're overlapping. It's almost like saying our psychology and psychiatry different. It's like yes and no, right? Uh, <laughs> mostly yes, right? But there's certainly a lot of overlap. Or, uh, you know, uh, counseling, for example. So like counseling and psychology are, you know, differences there. So there's definitely differences, yes, right? Are they identical? They're not, you know? If you're asking if there's a difference between HR psychology and IO psychology, I've never heard of HR psychology in my life, you know, 15 years. So maybe that's a thing. I don't know. People are always trying to come up with new ideas for degree programs and these things. And usually what happens is that there, it's just a, a, a and the program itself is comprised of a, a variety of courses that were already offered by the university. And the university says, let's come up with a sexy new diploma, sexy new degree program that we can market out there so we can make more money, which is brilliant. And, you know, I don't blame them for it. They're for-profit companies, a lot of these. Um, and so it's one of these situations at the end of the day where I would stick with a reputable IO psych program. That would be my recommendation. Uh, for me, personally, unless you want to be a professor, I would just recommend getting a master's in IO psych and then getting out there in the workplace, getting a ton of uh, experience. You're going to be able to build your practice that way you're gonna you know at the end like i said unless you want to be a professor in which case you need should go and get the doctorate super important so okay flawlessly that's my answer to your question thank you so much for watching lots of love peace